Let us move on to the next topic, enantioselective reaction. What is an enantioselective reaction? When a process such as a chemical reaction or a chemical conversion or total synthesis that produces a single enantiomer of a substance, then the reaction is enantioselective in nature. In this example, the ketone on reduction with alpine borane is enantioselective because it produces only one of the two possible enantiomer exclusively, which is R or S. On the other hand, the reduction of the same ketone with sodium borohydrate in isopropanol is not enantioselective because it produces a racemic mixture of both possible alcohol enantiomers. So to make it simple, when we end up with only one enantiomer, we call the reaction as enantioselective in nature. Enantiomeric excess is a factor that helps us to identify the percentage of one enantiomer over the other. The excess of one enantiomer over the other in a mixture of enantiomer is expressed mathematically as enantiomeric excess is equal to percentage of major enantiomer minus percentage of minor enantiomer. For example, if a mixture is composed of 86% R and 14% S enantiomer, then it has an enantiomeric excess of 86 minus 14 which is 72 percent it is expressed as ee when a substance is a single pure enantiomer it has an enantiomeric excess of 100 percent which is called homochiral or optically pure in this particular reaction we end up with r enantiomer which is 90 percent of the product mixture and S enantiomer which is 10% of the product mixture. The product of this reaction one possible step in the manufacture of naproxen an analgesic is a mixture of 90% S and 10% R and the enantiomeric excess is 80%. The reduction of acetophenone with sodium borohydrate confirmed that an achiral hydrate reducing agents cannot react in an enantioselective manner and it is a, a research article published by Yamaguchi NHS Mosher in Journal of Organic Chemistry in the year 1973. Yamaguchi and Mosher found that partial decomposition of lithium aluminium hydride with a chiral alcohol gave a modified chiral reducing agent which is capable of reducing acetophenone enantioselectively. So when acetophenone is reduced using lithium aluminium hydride, we end up with 50% of S isomer and 50% of R isomer and here the enantiomeric excess is 0%. Whereas when a chiral modified lithium aluminium hydride is used, one of the isomer predominates and we end up with an enantiomeric excess of 68%. Although the method is simple, it should be noted that the enantio selection 68% is not ideal in a practical sense because of the difficulties associated in purifying that is resolving the product in order to obtain a single isomer. Let us move on to our next topic, diastereoselective reaction. When a process such as chemical reaction or chemical conversion or total synthesis that can produce a mixture of diastereomers, but only one of these diastereomers are major product, then the reaction is diastereoselective in nature. 
in this particular example when dimethyl cyclohexene is treated with bromine we end up with anti addition product which is the only product form whereas the syn addition product is not formed so addition of bromine to 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexene is diastereoselective because anti addition is the only pathway and only a single diastereomer of the product is formed addition of HBr to 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane is not diastereoselective because the product is a mixture of nearly equal amounts of the two diastereomers when a starting material is already possessing a stereogenic center undergoes a reaction which leads to a generation of a new one diastereoselectivity becomes a major concern whereas the addition of a nucleophile to the two phases of acetophenone leads to a pair of enantiomer the prior presence of one of the stereogenic centers in 2 methyl cyclopentanone means that the two phases of the carbonyl carbon are diastereotopic in nature and hydride addition can lead to two separable products in unequal amounts now in this reaction the approach of the hydride reagent to the carbonyl group is easier from the rare that is psi phase further away from the larger methyl group our starting material is enantiomerically pure starting material is enantiomerically pure 2s enantiomer so each of the two diastereomers produced will be enantiomerically pure now one can look here that when lithium aluminium hydride is used as a reagent we end up with 76 percent of this particular diastereomer and 24 percent of this diastereomer on the other hand when we use a diisobutyl aluminium hydride which is a bulky hydride donor we end up exclusively with 100% of this isomer. So, diastereoselectivity also depends on the nature of the reagent used. Let us look into the details of the previous reaction where addition reactions like this are irreversible and they proceed under kinetic control and the product ratio reflecting the relative rates of the two modes of addition the reason why the product ratio is different because the two transition states the two transition states are diastereoisomeric and have unequal energy steric effect in the transition state determine the energies and also the product ratio this is a typical example of steric approach control in which a substrate reacts preferentially from the least hindered site the more bulky the reagent the bigger will be the preference for attack from the least inert side and this is what we observed in the previous example when we replace lithium aluminium hydride with diisobutyl hydride the presence of two methyl group methyl group at the second position to the prochiral site c1 ensures a high level of steric approach control in the above reaction 
and the cyclic nature of the ketone ensures that the methyl group cannot get away from the bond forming process. So this transition state or this energy diagram gives you a clear picture why the hydride prefers to attack from this side and not from the top. So the energy of the transition state for this particular isomer is high and the hydride prefers to attack from this side and therefore we end up with this product. And this is what we observed in the previous reaction and this is the best example for the steric approach control. Thank you for watching.